Hello everyone! This is the second of two videos where we're looking into cross-hatching. Today we're learning more advanced applications of cross-hatching. So if you haven't seen the first video where I do an introduction to the technique, I encourage you to go see that first. In this video, we are also going to be looking at the work of Elizabeth Catlett, an American and Mexican artist whose work is known for showing the African-American experience in the 20th century and the struggle for civil rights, often focused in the experience of women. Elizabeth Catlett lived during segregation. She was accepted in a prestigious school only to later be denied when they found out she was black. She was paid less than white art professors in the schools that she taught. She even once had to arrange a museum visit on a day that the museum was closed because the museum didn't let black people in on their normal days. All of these injustices made her very dedicated to being a voice for social justice and community building through her artwork. All of this makes her a super relevant artist to learn about today, in a moment where we're seeing related injustices still happening. Catlett used cross-hatching often in her drawings and prints. You can see some examples in this drawing. If you look closely in this area, that's cross-hatching. And even in this area, if you notice, she starts playing with different types of marks, moving from straight lines to little dots. And look at this other drawing. Although what she's accumulating here to build up different tones is not straight lines, she's using the same principles of cross-hatching, except with other types of marks, like dots or irregular swirls. Elizabeth Catlett was a printmaker and a sculptor, but her practice was very informed by drawing. Today, we're going to make a drawing based on one of Catlett's sculptures titled Elvira, which is part of the Bronx Museum's collection and apply the cross-hatching techniques we learned in the first video. If that sounds too daunting, don't worry. I'm going to be guiding you through the process of making this drawing. Don't worry about being perfect or making mistakes. I'm sure your drawing is gonna be great. For this video, you are only going to need sheets of paper, mine are cut in half size, a pencil for the initial drawing, a pen for the cross-hatching, and an eraser to erase the pencil marks in the end. So here's how we're going to make it. You're going to start with a pencil, drawing a vertical oval in the center of the sheet to represent the head. Remember, it doesn't need to be perfect, and if you use a pencil, you can always erase some of the parts and try again. Below the oval, draw two arches, like the shape of a parenthesis, curved to the outside, and one arch here underneath for the neck. Draw a line, down the middle of the face and two horizontal lines to separate the face in thirds, like so. Draw the eyes below the upper horizontal line and two more arches above each eye for the eyelids and the eyebrows. Now draw two vertical lines down the middle up until right above the lower horizontal line for the nose, ending with half an oval for the bottom of the nose. Under the nose, draw a shape almost like the top of a heart, and draw a diagonal line going down in each side, like so, for the upper lip. Then you can do a V-shape for the lower lip and soften the curve a bit. I'm now going to make the chin a little narrower, like the sculpture, and then fix the outline of the face to make it more like I see in the image. Finally, I'm going to add the hair. Once you're happy with your drawing, we can move on to the cross hatching. I'm going to start with outlining very softly some of the shadows in the face. The eyes, nose, and mouth are the darkest, but other dark areas are the cheeks, underneath the mouth, and under the chin also under the eyebrows. So what I'll do is add in the most cross-hatching layering to the eyes and similar very dark areas. I'll add four or five layers to those and add less layers to the rest. I'll do about three layers under the eyebrows for now and they don't have to be all covering the whole area. You can see in the sculpture that dark areas have lighter and darker parts. So right under the eyebrow is the darkest. I'm now going to do a general tone going down the cheeks, 
And remember when I said in the first video that lines don't have to be straight when you're shading a curved object? This face has a lot of curves and volumes, so I'm going to try to follow some of those curves sometimes as I cross hatch. Notice that I'm avoiding doing any lines in the very light areas, like the forehead, the eyelids, and the bridge of the nose. I'll cross different directions here, but I'll try not to saturate it a lot. Definitely not as dark as the eyes. Remember that is your darkest tone. Repeat the same on the other side. You can practice what curved and straight lines look cross hatched together, as well as in different directions. I'm trying to do horizontal curves here following the shape of the cheek. But I can also do straight lines in a different direction to add a darker tone. I'll do a little shade of only one layer on the sides of the nose and cross hatch several layers for under the nose because after the nostrils, that's one of the darkest areas. I'll do the outline of the mouth and do some layers under the mouth, trying to do some lines curved but also some straight lines as I do different layers. I'll do the same with the neck, starting with slightly curved vertical lines and more curved horizontal lines. See how that really makes it feel round shaped like a neck. I'll keep adding layers and mixing directions because this is one of the darkest areas. Now for the lips, again, I'll do my lines a little curved. These look a bit like eyelashes. Then I can mix it up with more layers where I see in the sculpture that it's darker. The lower lip is very light, so I'll only do one layer here and not even cover the entire lip. When you kind of have three or four different tones in a few places around the face and it starts to look three-dimensional in a way that you like, you can start adding more layers here and there to make your drawing more rich and to add shade to parts that maybe you didn't get so dark at the beginning. Finally, I'm going to end with the hair and here I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use irregular swirly lines to do a texture that looks like the hair in the sculpture. You can apply them the same as the other types of line. Leave the very light areas blank or with very little marks and build up several layers on the darkest areas. And there you got it. I also made a drawing with pencil to show you the difference of what it looks like. I hope you enjoyed learning about Elizabeth Catlett's work and life and that you feel more confident drawing faces now. Keep having fun applying cross-hatching to your various drawings and sharing your creations with the museum online. Bye!